Welcome to FIG's inaugural weekly economic and trading update. My name is Mark Bailey and this is Jessica Russett. So Mark, it's been quite a big week. We've got economic updates, we have got reporting season, quite a bit going on. Will you talk us through it? So a few key points for this week that the markets were following was geopolitical uncertainty in France where we actually had Marine Le Pen's National Front Party gaining in the opinion polls, holding 27% of the primary votes, the other parties at 20%. Still very, very unlikely that you will get elected after the secondary vote. Um, but we, as we've seen with Brexit and Trump, markets get nervous about that. So that, that was a, a key issue for this week. Also, we had uh, indications about the Fed and whether they're going to hike in March. You know, Janet Yellen had a couple of uh, meetings in front of uh, the Senate and continued to uh, talk about the regional presidents, saying that March is live. Current expectations are around about a 1 in 3% chance that they do hike in March, a bit higher in June. You know, there's various commentators coming out and saying, look, it should be higher than that. I still think they'll get to March and we probably don't see a hike. And then finally as well, domestically, we saw a pretty weak wage growth inflation uh, number again, which again kind of is a slightly different to the picture that the RBA is painting of a more upbeat economic out outlook domestically, but that wage growth n number is certainly not going to make them force them to hike rates in the future. In actual fact, I still think the economic outlook domestically is quite depressing. It's, it's not great and still quite soft, and I think we've still probably got one or two interest rate cuts going down the line this year, which again, doesn't help investors chasing yield. Um, you know, the continued search for income is, is one that's uh, going to be throughout this year. So, just in terms of you know, kind of your week, investors still chasing yield, I guess. They're always chasing yield, <laughs> uh, especially actually at the moment, in that there isn't much paper actually around. Uh, there seems to be a bit of scarcity in the market and that's not just for figures as well, that's the institutional market as well. So uh, what we're actually doing to try and counter that is look um, offshore in the USD space. So the Aussie dollar has actually been quite high, it's actually spiked up over 77 cents again this week again and you know as our you know uh, expectations that we do expect that to actually come off a, a bit. So this gives an opportunity now to, to um, lock in a good rate and um, get into some USD bonds. So we recently over the past month or so added some uh, new high yield USD bonds to our direct bonds list which is the process of um, finding bonds that can actually be broken down from um, $500,000 institutional parcel sizes down to $10,000 um, parcels and so on. That is probably a bit more digestible by yep. clients to add to their portfolio. And so three bonds in particular that were added was um, Talon, Frontier and Kindred. And what was really good about this is that these were um, in industries that previously we haven't had a product offering in the USD space. So it's um, Frontier is network and communications, uh, Kindred is the healthcare for post-acute care, and uh, we have Talon, which is the um, power generation and electricity company. So they also have shorter maturity dates. So it ranges from 2023 maturity to 2025 between the three of them. So clients that were previously holding maybe uh, longer dated bonds were able to switch out of those and then shorten their duration um, on their overall portfolio by moving into these shorter dated bonds, which worked out quite nicely. Yeah. I think maybe in terms of like the, the week ahead and what I'm going to be looking for. Mm. Um, so if you start off offshore, you know, there's the, the GDP figures coming out and also personal income and personal spending out of the States, which are probably the key ones. And what are they now, expecting for that? Um, the GDP is uh, around about 2.1% and personal income and spending is, is 0.3%. Okay. And interestingly, domestically as well, we have the, the GDP figures out and the, the Bloomberg consensus there is for a Q4 of 0.7, so year over year of 1.9. So I think the domestic figures are pretty important. Yeah. Again, setting the RBA in terms of is the economy weak or is it actually starting to show a bit more strength? And I think it probably be the, the former, um, but uh, that, will, that, that will be the key to statistics uh, this week. And what about yourself? Well, uh, my job's always tough looking for, you know, a new offering and, and new paper, especially with the landscape at the moment where it, it's all quite tough to get your hands on. Um, but we will continue to try and get some U USD supply. There's been a couple of bonds this week that we haven't been able to um, get. Uh, also with earlier in the week was President um, 
President's Day in the US, so we had uh, a public holiday and a lot of the traders we deal with were on leave. Um, so hopefully um, we'll be able to get some of those uh, tougher names that we were chasing. And also in the retail offering as well, just trying to see what we can get out there. Um, so we'll continue to search for um, supply. All right, thanks Jess. No, thank you Mark. And thank you and we'll see you next week. So tin hats on and enjoy.